So we have no uh, um, no members of the public here today. So we'll uh, proceed with the the other. I think for the record, let's just uh, introduce ourselves around the table. Hi. Chris Palamas, Chair. Marie Westberg, Senior Center Director. Ooh. Judy Kimberly, Secretary. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, Vice Chair. Leticia Ward, a member. Uh, James Winston, member. And Mike Cornwell, member. And. Oh, I'm sorry, Ruth McGrath, Administrative Assistant. Very good. So we we had uh, the formatting uh, apparently went uh, haywire in the transmission of uh, of these uh, minutes. Um, if you had an opportunity to read them, can we? Uh, yeah. Can we uh, consider approval of the um, of the minutes? Make a motion to approve. Second. Um, any discussion? Any corrections? We did the formatting will be straightened out for the for the permanent record. Mm -hmm. And then all in favor? Aye. Uh, minutes are approved. So our first on uh, a delightful order of business is uh, to welcome our, our new uh, uh, director of elder services and ADA coordinator. Yes. 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 Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Welcome. Do you want to say that at all about you? We know, I think, probably folks on the commission in general that you were in Williamsburg. And sure, I can what? tell you a little bit about yeah my history. Um, so I've been uh, the director in Williamsburg for seven years and three months, and now I'm here. And um, and I did do a lot of projects there around um, trying to change the physical environment in the town to make it more accessible for everyone. Um, so we did a healthy aging and community design project. Um, and um, so we walked the town center with a group of people and, and really assessed what needed to change to make um, people with disabilities and seniors who live in senior housing to be able to get down to the center of town. Um, just all kinds of things about how how comfortable it is to walk in a town with busy traffic and no sidewalks and just all kinds of accessibility issues. Um, and uh, there, for instance, the senior housing project there, um, the sidewalk would end and then the sidewalk would start again on the other side of the street. And I said to the local grocer, I said, you know, I'd really like you to get involved because I don't know if you're aware that, that no one from the senior housing who has any accessibility issues can actually get to your store to shop. And, and he, you know, he, um, I don't think he was aware of that, you know, but I, I think that, that the town then did make some changes. So um, I think that you have to, you have to have people get involved and advocate with the town sometimes to get things moving forward. Yes. Yes. This is Westford. Yes. As you know, all of us counselors in city service interviewed you. And my question, several of them, which I had, asked if you ever were an ADA coordinator, right? And you were not. And I thank you for that honesty very much. And also, not knowing, because you had stated there was not an ADA coordinator, which there is right. in Gurdy, well, but yeah. believe me, I'll show you the listing of all the towns and cities of who are ADA coordinators. Mm -hmm. And it's just not somebody at a senior center. Fire department, police department, it's unbelievable. I'll show right. you that. And it's an update they're not that I got from the state. Right. It's an update I just yeah. got from the state. Yeah. And that's for the interviewing process. Uh-huh. It's amazing. Yeah, I think I think that I think that um, the smaller towns like in the Hilltons, they don't they don't have the time and resources to put into these things. And so 
I think because there was grant funding to look at, um, I went to this conference um, on this whole 8 to 80 concept that a community should be accessible to everyone, really, to be age friendly. So it was through the lens of being age friendly, but it really, they talked about that in order for a community to be accessible for everyone who lives there, it really needs to, there not, needs to not be curbs and things like that. So um, if I hadn't been able to get this funding to do this project, I'm not sure that I would have been able to engage these advocates in the way that we did and actually move towards getting complete streets instituted. And we may get coordinated for that, but that should be very good at the beginning of this meeting. Yeah, I'm sure she does. She's very, very busy, though. She's the they all are. Yeah. And so if you're having right, somebody yeah. like Chris Palanas, right? Yeah. It would be not everybody yeah. coordinator. Because he's very firm. But uh, yeah, I do think though that they need to <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Can I take one moment and ask, let's redistribute the microphones. I realize we have this mic down here. No, you can keep that one. We can move one. I can bring no, that. Okay. They, can they have meandered that down. way there, like how we're doing it. Like okay. some of the flowers in our garden. Okay. Oh, that will be able to, we can stand. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and welcome, Hannah. Oh, thank you, Chris. I hope you didn't get too wet out there. Oh, not too bad, a little, but not bad. <laughs> Oh, and I got some exciting news to, to tell you all, too. To. I got my own place. Oh, that's a little Oh, good. Idea. But anyway, it's to complete yeah, what I wanted yeah, to yeah. complete. Welcome. Thank you. And I know it's going to take time, yeah. but yeah. you will be fine. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Very nice yeah, well, to um, have you here. <laughs> Yes, and um, Hannah, this is uh, Marie Westberg. Hi, Hannah. Uh, excuse me? Marie Westberg. Thank you. Terrific. Um, we did have a chance, uh, Judy and I, um, uh, met with uh, Marie, and we just went, went over things uh, uh, broadly and, and said in terms of, uh, as we know, the ADA coordinator responsibilities are um, have become pretty complex and layered, and we will try to just deal with them, you know, piece by piece, and not not have, have everything land too quickly. But and as you're dealing with all of the other mm -hmm. new responsibilities that, that you're um, you're undertaking as as we move forward, and I did think as we are developing the uh, uh, the self evaluation report, one of the aims there is we'll try to have a fairly complete history we found in, in trying to understand what had been done before we were uh, on the disability, before I was on the disability commission, um, that the record um, had not been assembled and in our next self-evaluation report we hope we'll have a, a complete history not only of our process but we'll um, have as appendices the previous uh, documents and so that hopefully in the future there'll be some continuity to the record. So, any any other questions or comments? Um, our next item, uh, we have uh, our invitation to um, Chief Casper to attend the, the commission <coughs> meeting. Um, um, a letter was sent and the chief responded uh, as expected very positively. And um, I think you communicated about the, uh, the, the day, Ruth, and, and as the chief committed to our next meeting, yes, we had said June or July. July. Yes. Yeah. Okay. July or June? July. Okay. So not our next meeting. Not our next. Oh, no, this is only May. Huh? Yeah. yeah. July. So our next meeting is July. July. For the July meeting. So um, I thought we usually, I thought we usually have July off, don't, don't we? What about July? August off? I think Joe, uh, Chief, Chief Casper will come to our meeting in July. Yes. So that we're just in July? July. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I moved off a month, so it's July, but she's coming. She's very busy. In the July meeting, we'll go over the series of issues that we've discussed around 
uh, strengthening um, enforcement on keeping walkways clear, enforcing uh, um, reserved parking you know, for, uh, for, for accessible spaces, and also the concerns we expressed to, to know more about the, the training of, of officers, particularly around uh, conflict mitigation and interventions in circumstances that might involve uh, persons with disabilities, particularly psychiatric disabilities, where um, you know good um, training of officers and, and we would hope the continual reinforcement of that uh, that training so that uh, anything we can do as a commission to support that well so that will be on our July on our July agenda yeah now we're off what August August we're going to take August off this year yes we decided that that'd be a good thing they are good Ooh. So the next was um, communication with the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Communication right now is spoken to by a higher power. I can see Jay right now. These rolling thunders are quite something. Who's with time? She's with three people. So I. Uh, I spoke with uh, uh, Jeff, um, Jeff Dugan, who's the uh, um, assistant director at the Massachusetts Office on Disability, um, about a number of the issues that, that um, had been raised in previous meetings. Um, we had uh, a resident, of course, of um, Salvo, who's had concerns um, on her request to have a designated parking space. Um, oh, yeah. and. Um, we will uh, reach out to her and let her know that the, the Office on Disability has worked with people directly <coughs> on negotiating that with housing authorities. The way that they have done it, it clearly is not to have a space with an, an accessibility um, standard signage as that indicates anyone with a placard can park there. What Jeff describes, typically what they have done is simply to give a numbering to the space say reserved space number and so it is confidential to whom it's reserved although it will be publicly apparent from who parks there but uh, i was very pleased i think you know the office on disability when they can uh, pick up and, and work on through a specific issue like that it's helpful because it's not going to be back and forth between here and there on encouraging the, the housing authority to uh, undertake what we understand would be a reasonable modification, but we'll have the, the state office on disability uh, waiting you know, in Chris support of that. I'm really, you know, happy to hear that. Also, I have to say with the housing authority, and I'll say it again, I did not have a problem with a resident who I helped out who was a cancer patient at Joan Tobin's. I brought this up at the meeting here before, and she asked, for a handicapped parking space, same problem like over here. I made that call. It was done the next day. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they had her apartment number on it. She had a choice, either her license plate number on it or the apartment, and she wanted the apartment number. But they did it the next day. So they were very good working with mm -hmm. And you know, she had a doctor's order it was completely ignored for two and a half months. Oh, goodness. That's insane. So that was under a previous administration? No. Got, no, this was under the, yes. under the same. So, yes. so but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what is, is the outcome there because we have several residents who've said, both of McDonald and Salvo, who have said that uh, reservation of the parking space is is essential. Yeah. I think the, the other issues that we, um, I asked uh, Jeff about, we had, uh, oh, we had questions raised, of course, uh, by Phil, momentary oh, lapse here, Phil, so Phil, Phil, Phil Sullivan. Yep, uh, by Phil Sullivan. Um, he had expressed his concerns about uh, uh, gas stations not being aware of their obligation to uh, pump gas for 
people with disabilities. Um, Jeff has given me the reference. It's uh, Massachusetts General Law. Um, what is it? C94, Section 295CC. Um, we have a quotation here, and there is some additional detail. And, and a reference, I have to say what, I'm not clear, I think, Bill, if there is only a single attendant in a store, um, I don't believe that the state would require any kind of shutting or, or locking of a store temporarily in order uh, to pump. That may need some additional clarification. There has to be some limit, but they are supposed to put up the signage and certainly inform their employees of the of the requirements. So we will move forward to something we had discussed a potential um, communication to um, all of the uh, gas stations in town to remind them of that obligation and to um, identify the signage requirements um, that they are, they're going to need. The third issue that I raised with with Jeff was knowing that the Office on Disability does a lot of outreach meetings and they bring both an amplification system and assistive listening system with them. And that's been a concern that we have discussed greatly that uh, many of the, the meetings in the city, um, in some circumstances, there are assistive listening systems, at least signage, but nobody seems to know how to operate or where the technology is. And for other general meetings, like the one that we had last night on Ryan Road, which was, I thought, a wonderful, um, shall we say, a point of emphasis to the mayor on the importance of this issue, that the meeting last night on Ryan Road, which, which addressed um, the movement um, through the approval process of a proposal to develop a cannabis growing facility. It was attended by, I thought, what, over 150 people? A very good turnout. It was in a space that was very, very difficult even for people. Wrong to, space, too. No. The wrong space. Yes. And, Where was it? And hearing of what the, the nature of the discussion was, was a major, uh, a major problem in the room. So I, I would like to suggest that um, given the recency of that, that, um, that the commission, I would compose a, a quick letter uh, to the mayor, uh, emphasizing that um, securing uh, both portable um, sound amplification and assistive living system is going to be one of our principal recommendations. For Ryan Road School? For where? Oh, portable. Uh, 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 one that could be used for any of these these meetings be um, is at least is going to be one of the step while there may be more um, and perhaps we can expedite the uh, discussion with the mayor on that uh, Jeff has given me the, the systems that were it were purchased uh, by the Massachusetts office on, on disability their uh, assistive listening system is a telex sound made ST300 system um, and he gave the specs on, on uh, uh, receivers, transmitters and uh, the, the number of uh, receivers that they have and other technology. I believe the cost when they purchased a couple of years ago um, was approximately $7,000 for that system. Um, I'll do a little bit of looking into it and get a confirmation of approximate costs, I think any time, hmm, if we move towards, and I think we should be recommending the purchase of a, of a system expedited, and for the mayor to say where in the, the budget that could happen, um, but through experience, I think we're going to get a sense if we need to add a different additional um, receivers or um, when there may be multiple systems needed because there will be you know more than a single meeting that, that has to has to utilize it i have the funding for the community preservation act and we are now at the last phase 
and Order for the Theater Restoration Phase Two, Academy of Music, CPA money at $50,000. And we're going to be approving this this week. I would suggest of getting funding because it's for people with disabilities and hearing of uh, going ahead then let's go for the funding for the CPA like any other people do and I think we should do that. So this is a grant application? Community Preservation Act funding, right? You have to be approved yep. by the CPA yeah. committee here, commission here in the city. They do restoration, state hospital, signage, historical commission, the churches, whatever. They do That's assisted the stuff. They might do exactly. assisted living, li assisted listening. Right. <laughs> assisted listening. Yeah, for yeah. the th for the theater. I think we really should go for it. Well, what what is general? general? See, like this one here is a three thousand. Who, who disperses the money? What what agency? The city taxpayers. The city CPA money. Yeah. There's here in the city our CPA. We have a commission on that. Oh, and David okay. Murphy is on that, and we have a couple, let's see, another person, Bob Osborne, he lives on my board, he's a financial advisor and so forth. We have several people that are on that. And what Can we do is work with the one or Ted Keller of saying this is what we need. So it doesn't need and to be I have needed. not seen something like this come forth. And I think we should go for it. But it, yep. it yeah. doesn't need to be tied to a specific historical building. Pardon? The request, does it have to be, I mean, if it's for the theater. Right, we makes, have to, they have to come to us. And because the CPA commission. Oh, they have to come to you. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, okay. They're, the CPA commission, people know that they have to go with them when they want something yeah. like this. With taxpayers money mm -hmm. which it is on the CPA it's on your tax bill right okay and it is broken down into categories what you could use it for historical preservation housing open space so forth like that sure and yeah I think we should do it I, I would say for the theater a portable system is not going to be adequate for the Academy of Music because of the, the space and it is a theater and they have that that's a specific facility that also needs assistive living but then they should apply for it and that should be that should be hardwired we had said that we were going to um whether you were going to look into previous um excuse me ruth you were going to look into previous <laughs> minutes and that some years ago you met with probably the previous director of the Academy of Music hey, about assistive listening. Here. And I've gotten back, I've gone back maybe two years so far, but I had to see what was going on. I don't know. Kind of shocking now. But at any rate, the, the Academy of Music has a definite obligation mm -hmm. under oh, ADA. Definitely. So to, to make the request under. Mm -hmm. So they should, yeah, they should be putting in the right yeah, thing exactly. to do the project. Go on, work for it. Right. How are we going to do that if we don't have any money, though? Are they can move that going out there. The state yeah. hospital right down the line. If it becomes a priority for the city, um, and there's advocacy for it, I mean, people people of all abilities should be able to go to the theater. <laughs> don't you? Yeah, because I, I perform over there so, anyways. To be clear, should, yeah. shall we do both uh, under this? Um, encourage that they submit a request for the Academy of Music, and then we also speak to the mayor about a portable system. One of the things that has to go along with the system will be to figure out um, where it's going to be held, how it's going to be maintained, yeah, when way. it's deployed, you know, um, who is going to have the technical capacity to do that? And then there are a number of communication protocols. What we heard last night at the meeting was eventually the people in the front of the room picked up some amplification, but very often you would have somebody speak for a minute in the back of the room and you had no idea what they were saying. 
and then you might get a, a 10 second response from the front of the room. So you were listening to less than half conversation. Oh, Part of it has to be wireless mics that are distributed to the, pro to the, to the people in attendance in that kind of circumstance, and it will slow the process somewhat. People have to take the time actually to present the microphone and get people to use it. But it will involve a lot more people because more and more that one will be able to hear. Right. And it might militate against some of the people who simply speak repetitively, right? Yeah. Because then anybody managing the meeting can be sure that the next person has an opportunity to speak rather than what we saw happening acutely last night. There's that goes a small on number of people speaking repetitively. Because they were sort of repeating some things that people had already said but couldn't hear? No, repeating the thing they said a few minutes before, repeating it again, oh. repeating it again. Oh, so that <laughs> everyone... Or a variation of the question no, already asked? They're just repeating. We have this problem in every meeting in the city. Yeah. It's just not Brian Rowe. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I understand. It's terrible. Yeah. I have a question. Do you think they'll, uh, for the cameras, do you think they'll part of a lamp part in the back? Because, like, you know where the, you know where the people, the back. The teacher, I, I think let's stay on this topic of assistive listening. So right. what are the steps that we should undertake at this point? Um, should I communicate with the mayor? As I think last night would really have raised those concerns and just say that that um, assistive listening is high on our priorities and that we will want to um, um, meet with you at, at some point to um, discuss at least the purchasing of a portable system for the city and at the same time pursuing having the academy look to a a permanent and hardwired system there's grants out there people have to go and work for it it's not going to come in your hands i mean i'm sorry marianne i didn't hear that i said people have to work for it Chris. they need to go out and search for grants and we have expert people in the city who are very good with grant writing. yeah but the first thing is my question is should i or should i not communicate with the mayor yes i think you should sure. okay <laughs> that's it he was standing there and he saw the chaos and the inability for people to hear each other the other thing is we got a communications protocol adopted that was going to be used in meetings I think that would be one way of addressing this general process. There are people who simply, again, um, you know, essentially it, it requires a form of moderation in which the next person to speak is recognized. I think, like with Ruth, when she set it up at Ryan Road School with NCTV, mm -hmm. we didn't have a problem. We had the microphones there. I'm talking about the big room that we use. It was so congested with people. That is not the room we asked for. It's probably about the size of this. And I'm talking about being congested. She set it up with NCTV. Our microphones, the speakers were right there on the table. That's where everybody sat. And they got up in front of the pedestal, the podium, and they spoke. They, we didn't have a problem, did we? Yeah. Did very well. So that was for amplification, right? We also want to have a system. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so. you got to have a system, Chris. I agree with that, but I know we have money in the kitty here, and I'm hoping that the city can find. Let me finish, please. Finally, finally realize they need to come in and support us and help us financially. Oh, I am certainly not proposing that this money comes out of the, the Disability Commission. Once again, this is the point we have to make to the mayor. These are long overdue obligations. This was articulated in 1991, this obligation. So, And what we've seen is certain purchases were made, but what has not been held together is maintenance, um, assigning a technical responsibility, and, and so we can put together at least a more complete definition of what, of what needs to be done. And since you're bringing that up, 
our sidewalks now, you saw, are being all ripped up in back of City Hall. You have no access to getting in there. I'm just letting you know that. If, uh, did you know that everything is? Yeah, they told us that yesterday. Thank God. Yeah. Because it's difficult finding parking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for how long is it going to be? Till the end of June. Okay. But then it will be. But then it will be accessible. But until then, it'll be absolutely beautiful. Then it will be great. Yeah. Right. Have to but until then, if you want to down. go to City Hall, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a reference to the $250,000 that we secured through the Massachusetts Office on Disability Grants. Right? Yeah. I, I want to again kind of commend uh, Jeff Dugan for his good work. He also um, has given information on a Regional Commission on Disability meeting which will be held in Webster on um, Wednesday, June 6th from 11 to 2. These are, um, we attended a meeting that was... Um, that was in East Hampton. It was in East Hampton uh, about a year and a half ago. And that actually, I think, led to some of these communications with MOD. It was useful. Um, I, it's not a date that works well for me, but if any commission members are interested in going, or if you are interested and it works in your in your schedule, it's an opportunity. It's basically um, usually two to three staff people with a mass office on disability, uh, people from the various commissions, and they get to basically interact around both an update on state process, but to communicate what different commissions are working on. Could I see it? Like one year they go to one city and then to another city how did they do i believe so i believe they they make some decisions about scheduling in different in, in different locations i think i found the meeting useful oh i did too but i think it's could you pass that um the information down so i could read it please first i'm not sure what the second page is I think it makes it really difficult for some of the people who don't drive but to go. Yep. Yeah, places. and that's a ways away. That's not. It's a regional it's meeting. Yeah, that's a regional. Uh, the one that, that goes for that. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. 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 Thank that period, I don't have to go through the front. Do you think they'll be got to go around the back with the bathroom doors? No, no, there. What, like the way back where people where the stage part is, because there's no way, there's no. Oh, you'll have to ask Chris that. Chris, do you think they'll build a ramp right behind what, you know, where, where the stage part is at the way back? Do you think they'll build a ramp? Because the steps. Behind? You're talking behind. Oh, the is front? It, you're talking about the Academy of Music. Yeah. 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 That's one of the questions we're going to we're going to ask as we get more information about what they're planning at the academy. They said they're doing a capital campaign. We don't know if they've had a complete assessment of what their needs are because of a ramp to the to the back to the stage and all. Yeah, because because I perform over because I perform over there and it's and it's hard for for say like because it's like. Um, there's one person who's in wheelchair and she has to go like in the front bay would be much easier if she went around the back like with the rest of us. Absolutely. Makes so that, that will be among the questions that that we ask. Anything else on that? Our final uh, agenda item is uh, the commission approved at our last meeting. I contacted the um, I contacted um, um, Rob um, Everly, who's the Information Technology Accessibility Coordinator for the five colleges is the title, and he is going to do a, a, uh, a review of the four of the pages of, of, our, um, of the city website. And it is the same review that uh, we did for Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance the State, in which gave a kind of a, just a basic overview of what the, 
the status was of the accessibility provisions. It's just helpful to have it coming from someone authoritative from, uh, um, from outside. And he said that he should have that uh, review completed but at the end of uh, at the end of May, he had pressing end of semester work. It's a it's a it's a general review, and what we heard from the we did this for community colleges. With the general heading is general, a serious effort is being made, and then there will be a technical detail on areas in which things could be strengthened um, from the. Association of Descriptive Language with Graphics, and, et cetera. Um, so that should be useful and give us a sense of what the, yeah. what the level is for, for, next, uh, for next steps. And that is our agenda. Is there anything under new business? Nope, Chris. Could you possibly, the information that you got on the reserve parking spaces, the gas pumping, I'm very concerned about that because I see Phil a lot and I would like whatever has been written to you so I could show it to Phil. Yep. So I can pass that around. I just have a question. Sure. What? A question about we have it on the I think we should have uh, Marie hold these, these things in our files so sure. you pass it over to and so, we can copy we can copy for you of course. And there is some more detail to, you know, go back on the website and, and get some. And I was uh, in particular wondering about that, that question. If there is a single operator, and you've got um, obviously a commercial enterprise with goods out, you know, what is the expectation if you, if you don't have, have the, staff to deploy? They'd have the same problem, though, if there was an emergency with pumping gas. You know, I mean, they, they'd interest them. They would have to send someone out. Okay, sir. I mean, it, and if you only have one, one, if you only have one staff you person, have to, I, get, I don't know. That, yeah. that would still be. Well, I was wondering how do they know that someone needs right. to pass yeah. yeah. that person? The assignment is supposed to be by the honk of a horn, uh, uh, yeah. and you're supposed to basically define what your system is and put it on a sign, so people will know how to do it. Yeah. You going over that? Back in the days when I was going out and getting my gas, I did find it problematic. Just mm watch -hmm. this. Is there a second page? Yeah. The, the whole page. Second, second page to this. Oh, there's. I just need that. Just this page. On the gas station. Sure. Probably. Let's see. Hey, what do you want to see him tonight? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, continuity probably it was an email chain. Okay. Um, we're you know proceeding on the the other counts. Uh, uh, Doug, who's working with us on on drafting the uh, self evaluation transition, is back from he had a short trip down in Texas, and uh, we're meeting again, and we're trying to get that that narrative put together so that we can can present. Uh, on the last meeting, I did hand out the response that um, I had sent to the staff member from the Mass Office on Disability yeah. and asked you all to read it and tell me if there was anything of our priority issues you did not feel was covered in that communication. Now, fess up if you didn't read it. At any rate, um, you all um, had that document <coughs> at our last meeting. I think, I think you got a copy. Emma, you, it was your first meeting. And um, I just found that was a communication with the grants manager at the Mass Office on Disability. And as I, I um, responded somewhat spontaneously with voice recognition software, it seemed to cover most of the elements that have now gone into the preliminary outline of our self evaluation report. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Move adjourn. Second? Second is. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
much to go. 